I, Daddy. Martha Ellen goes, um, she's like, Mom, uh, you can't lead worship today. And I said, why not? She said, um, <laughs> and I'm like, why can't I lead worship? I said, what if I lead worship and then you can have daddy? She goes, oh, that's a great idea. <laughs> Any plot to, uh, uh, to, to have daddy to herself. Um, so <laughs> if you guys will just, uh, stand up with me. We're going to start at the end and go backwards. Cause I felt like that's what the Lord is saying to do. Ooh. Come, Holy Spirit. So you're going to make this de declaration, uh, which means you're going to say it after I say it, okay? All right? So because I choose, because I choose to, humble myself to humble myself and diligently obey the voice of the Lord, I will be blessed. I will be blessed in 2022. In 2022, I'm I'll be blessed when I go out. I'll be blessed when I go out. I'll be blessed when I go in. I'll be blessed when I go in. My enemies will be defeated. My enemies will be defeated. My storehouses will be blessed. My storehouses will be blessed. The work of my hands will be blessed. The work of my hands will be blessed. I will lend to many. I will lend to many. I will not borrow. I will not borrow. I will be the head. I will be the head. And not, not the tail. tail. Not the tail. Because I choose. Because I choose. To avoid, obey the voice of the Lord. To obey the voice of the Lord. These blessings. These blessings. Shall come upon me. Shall come upon me. And overtake me. And overtake me. And overtake me. So I say come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. Overtake us now. Overtake us now. There he is. Take a breath. Take a minute. One more time. There's me. There's me. One more time. Just say in your heart, fill me more. Fill me more. Fill me more than you so that I walk out another way today. I don't want to walk out the same way I came in. Some of you guys are receiving more. Just keep receiving. Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. Rob Schaefer, the Lord's all over you. He's got a new thing coming for you, 2022. And your fathering gift is increasing. You're going to start to father more and more and more spiritual children in this season. <laughs> so I bless the father heart of God. And actually, there's many fathers in this house. There's many spiritual fathers. You're being called and anointed. Not just your biological. All of them. God says, say yes to all of them. Some of you are being anointed right now to be in a brother and a sister in Christ. You're like, I got saved 30 seconds ago, but what I have, I'll give you. That's being a sister and a brother in Christ coming alongside of somebody saying, yeah, you fell. That's all right. Take my hand. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Give it away. You want to grow in the Lord? Give it away. Give away what you have. Keep saying yes. Don't bring them to somebody else. Keep saying yes. Oh, gosh, this person wants me to pray for him. Keep saying yes. This person has cancer and they want me to pray for him. Keep saying yes. Keep saying yes. Keep saying yes. I still don't know how I feel about God. Sometimes I hear him and sometimes I'm not. That's okay. Give it away what you have. Give away what you have. Keep saying yes. Thank you, Lord, for the anointing angels that are in this place today. Thank you that we have chosen to never be the same. Thank you that we're coming for you. <laughs> and just like Lauren, we're not going to let you go because we're desperate for you. Hallelujah. Woo! All right, you guys can be seated. If you have your Bibles, you can open them to 1 Samuel 16. 
Um, there's going to be a time where you're going to answer some questions to the Lord. So if you need something to write other than your phone, then there's paper and pens back there if you're still in the paper and pen world like I am. All right. So the word of the Lord. Um, 1 Samuel 16, 14. You guys got it? You good? Just letting y'all get settled. <laughs> All right. 1 Samuel 16, verse 14. But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and a distressing spirit from the Lord troubled him. I want to set up the story a little bit about who Saul is. And who the Holy Spirit is at this point, okay? So first, we're going to talk about Saul. Saul was anointed by Samuel in the Old Testament to be Israel's first king. Judges governed over Israel before that time, okay? And if you remember, Samuel anointed Saul king by pouring oil over him. So what does that oil represent? Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So Holy Spirit came upon Saul. And just like Holy Spirit still does to this day, he comes upon us for a time, a season, and a purpose. Somebody say, a purpose. A purpose. Okay. Holy Spirit, during this time period, came upon, okay, and then, as you said from the story, the distressing spirit came on when the, when the Holy Spirit came off. We have a better covenant. We have a better covenant. So, by God's grace, we are born at this time. <laughs> so, the, uh, so, this is an Old Testament story. And it happened before Jesus walked on the earth. When Jesus walked on this earth, he uh, died on the cross for our sins. He went down. He got the keys from hell. He came back to earth. He walked among us for 40 days. And then he ascended to the right hand of the Father because his work was finished on earth. And what did he say? I'm going to send you the helper, the Holy Spirit. Emmanuel, God with me. Somebody touch your belly. Holy Spirit, God with me. Holy Spirit is God with me, Emmanuel. Because we have the Holy Spirit like this, he will never leave us. He will never forsake us. That's Hebrews 13. Never leave you means he'll never physically depart. It's not on and off like it used to be. He's never physically going to leave you. Uh, forsake means he's never going to turn his heart away from you. No matter how many times we get it wrong, he's never going to turn his heart away from you. He's never going to give you a stiff shoulder, a turn back. Mm, nah. No, you messed up. Mm, nah. Not the way we, we receive uh, love. That's not the way Holy Spirit does it. You messed up. You didn't mess up. He's open arms. He's right there. Okay? That makes sense? So <clears throat> Acts 2, 1, 4, just so you have a little bit more context of what, what happened when Holy Spirit came. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind. It filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Okay. So you and I and everyone who's listening to this who has given their life to Christ and been filled with the Holy Spirit. That is, that is Holy Spirit sealed. You are sealed with Holy Spirit. And you're sealed until the day of redemption. Okay. If you are a born again Christian. You know because you were once dead and now you feel alive. If you're not sure you're born again, then we probably need to get you sure. And I'm going to give you an opportunity if, if you're just not sure. 
hey, I don't know. I came to, I came to church all my life. I don't feel any different. We need, we need you to get all the way in. I was in church, in a dead church my entire life. I believed in God. I didn't give him my heart, and I didn't give him my life. I felt pretty dead, so I got most of my fulfillment from other things. When I met him, he rocked my world. I was alive. Uh, I'm still pretty annoying when I wake up. I wake up 4 or 5 in the morning, and I am excited because I know God's going to move, and I know he's going to talk to me that day. And that's the only place I want to be. All right. So back to this story. I'm just giving you that concept uh, because this story is a little is a little tough. And I, I want you to get to the end so that you can journey with me. OK, there's no condemnation in Christ. We're talking about hard things because I'm an equipper and I want every one of us unstuck in every area of our life. OK, um, so in this particular story. The spirit of the Lord departed from Saul and a distressing spirit from the Lord began to trouble him. So what I want to talk about today is when Holy Spirit comes upon you versus when another spirit comes upon us. Okay, so there's there's other things that we can carry other than Holy Spirit. You guys with me? Are we recognizing what and who we are carrying? Are we coping with the problem or are we recognizing the root of the problem? And lastly, are we concerned with the right people? Okay. So 1 Samuel 16, 15, the verse after we just read, says, And Saul's servant said to him, Surely a distressing spirit from God is troubling you. Saul didn't even know. He had a servant tell him. What in the world? That freaks me out, y'all. That, that is terrifying. That you can be anointed for a position, for a purpose, from a time, but you're actually operating in a different spirit. Whoa. So... What we do in Bible study, so Paul Gibbs is one of our mentors, and he has taught us how to read the Bible. And one of the things that we do when we read the Bible is we do a thing called drash. And a drash is when we just ponder. We think about the scenarios. We say, why in the world would Saul not know that the Lord has left him? So that's what you're going to do real quick. I'm going to give you 30 seconds, and I want you to think and ask. Why in the world would he not know that the Spirit of God had left him? So I'm going to give you 30 seconds. Think about why he wouldn't know what he was carrying. And then just jot down your answer super quick, either on your phone or on a piece of paper. So the question is, Saul had the spirit of God come upon him and then it left and a distressing spirit came upon him and a servant had to tell him that this was happening. He did not know it. So your question is, why didn't Saul know? Why didn't Saul know that it wasn't the Lord that he was carrying? It was a distressing spirit. So take 30 seconds. You're writing it down so you can study it later. <laughs> All right. So when I did this, I had, I had my own drash, right? So my own drash was that he simply didn't have a relationship that was built up. That's my drash. I, I kind of thought of like maybe a husband and wife scenario where they're madly in love when they say their vows, 
And then a couple of days, uh, a couple of weeks, they're like, oh, well, they're okay. You know, she's all right, he's all right. Let's just get on with it. And there's no intimacy. There's no knowing each other. You're like, I thought this was gonna be awesome. And it's not. So are you okay with this? Cause I'm not. And I kind of felt like that was what was going on in this, in this thing. It doesn't say I'm right. It's just saying that's what my pondering with the Lord was. So I want to ask you to ask Papa God. Okay. So close your eyes for me really quickly. Papa God is your spirit upon me, anointing me for a time, a season and a purpose. Or is a different spirit upon me? Quickly write down what the Lord gives you. If it's not his spirit, ask where that spirit came from and how long you've carried it. If it is his spirit, ask him, am I carrying out the purpose that you've anointed me with? The spirit of God came upon and still comes upon for a time, season, and purpose. That doesn't mean you're fulfilling the purpose. Am I fulfilling it, Lord? Am I doing what you called me to do? Okay. Let's take a breath. All right, here we go. So the, the next thing I want to talk about is are we coping with problems in our life or are we recognizing the root? In this story, we're going to read about about Saul and this is uh, 1 Samuel 16 16 okay so you guys read with me the servant's still talking to Saul and he says let our master now command your servants who are before you to seek out a man who is skillful player on the harp and it shall be that he will play it with his hand when the distressing spirit from God is upon you and you shall be well. So if the first part of the story really didn't uh, shock me, this is the next really shocking thing for me. He doesn't care what the root problem is, it sounds like. Sounds like he just wants the king in a good mood. I just want it to benefit me. So if you could just be happy, that would be great. But I don't care enough about you to figure out what the real problem is. I will just, we'll just get some music. We'll just play that and then we'll, we'll be good. Um, another thing we can extract from this story is to say that worship is an effective means of dealing with distressing spirits. Okay. This could be good, but it could be not so good. So it can be good to say, oh man, I've got something on me. I am going to just worship with all my heart. How many of you guys do this? Get in your car, sing a new song to the Lord, kick everybody out of the house, sing as loud as you can, hope the cops don't come because you are getting it off of you. And like, I am going to get my joy on. I don't care what it sounds like. I don't care that I'm off key. I'm going to get the joy of the Lord back. I'm not carrying this thing on me because he died for me so I could have joy. So if anything else is coming back here, uh-uh, it's got to get off. That's great. But we could also get a little dab. A little dab will do ya. I'm going to come in, have a few worship tunes, and then I'm going to go out and do exactly what I was doing before that doesn't get to the... Yes. Y'all are with me. <sighs> okay. In the same way, this could be a person who is just now coming into the things of the Lord, or they could be secular for, you know, whatever, but they would deal with the distressing spirit, right? I'm, I'm way guilty of this. I had distressing spirits come on me. I would call a friend. I would make a, an evil and wicked plan. And that is how I would deal with the distressing spirit. The next day it was worse than the way the day before. Okay. This is before I got saved, but that is how I used to deal with it. It didn't work. If it did, I would tell you, Jesus Christ is the only one that can work. Jesus Christ is the only one that can work. And you guys know if Jack Daniels worked, I would tell you about it. <laughs> I like results. I like things that work. Jesus Christ works. He is amazing. He's amazing. So people can do this at church for feel good. And they can be miserable for the rest of the week. 
We want to get to the root so that we're full of joy the rest of the week, so that we have the Spirit of the Lord upon us the rest of the week. Okay, my next thing is <laughs> he had people around him. He, he had people around him that didn't care about his real root problem. That's terrifying, right? Because if we're deceived and we don't have anybody to speak truth with us or we're deceived and we have no transparency, how are we ever going to have truth in our life and here so that we have the life that God gave us? So I just want you to think about some questions. Who is in my inner circle? Who is in my inner circle that I allow to speak life to me? You guys know my story. You know, when I had Martha Ellen, I had a total flip out. And my uh, best friend from my childhood, uh, who is not aggressive at all, she's super meek, super gentle, and super godly woman. And I said, this is what I'm going to do. And uh, she said, no, it's not. And she was like, you are going to do this, this, and this. You're going to pray this, this, and this. And you're going to do it every week. And I'm going to make sure you're doing it. Do you hear me? You're going to stop doing that. And you're going to do this. Because that is negative thinking. And that is demonic. And that's going to ruin your life. And it's going to ruin your family. So stop it. And she put her foot down. And I was thankful. I didn't want to hear it at first. But I was thankful. So who in your inner circle can speak into your life. Who knows you? Now, when this girl calls me, I can tell by the sound of her voice. I've known her from before I was born. She's known me. So she's a little older. She's three years older than me. And I can tell when we pick up the phone, I can tell immediately because that's how well we know each other. Is there anyone around me who cares about the Lord and my relationship with the Lord? You can have people that love you, but they may not care about your relationship with the Lord who is in my life this is what you want to be thinking about who is in my life that cares about my relationship with the Lord is there anyone in my life that I'm transparent with that can help me when I'm deceived remember it's it's kind of like a horrific joke how do you know you're deceived you won't if you're deceived you will be deceived None of us are, are too far away from that. That's a little bit of pride in the heart, and that's it. You've got blinders on. You cannot see. That means I need somebody who knows me, somebody who cares, somebody who can speak into my life, come up and rip that thing off and say, this is the truth. You need people who you're transparent with. Lastly, am I in a vicious cycle with a distressing spirit? I want you to know because we're going to get to the root and we're going to uproot that thing. Okay. So this is good questions. I know they're hard, but these are good questions because you want to know if something's coming on and off, on and off. Okay. So the root problem, first Samuel 15, 22 to 23. So just turn back one page or scroll, whatever you want to, whatever you want to do. Okay, so Samuel said, has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to heed than the fat of rams. And for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. And stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he also has rejected you from being king. Okay? So the problem wasn't this distressing spirit was coming on and going off. The problem was... The Lord in that time, because we did not all have the Holy Spirit in us, the Lord at that time spoke through prophets, okay? And the prophet Samuel told Saul exactly what to do. 
In other words, you don't know what God is saying. Only the prophets did back then, okay? Thank God we live in now. But back then, this is the way it was. So when he said, hey, this is what God is saying, this is what you need to do, he did not obey the voice of the Lord. He operated in rebellion. His character, his character operated in stubbornness. So he knew, but he just was stubborn. He was stiff-necked. He wouldn't bend his neck. He wouldn't bow to the things of the Lord. It cost him representing God to the people. So when God used the prophets, this is the season, this is the first time that he was going to move through the kings. The kings were going to represent God to all the people. The kings were going to make sure that the rules and the regulations and everything that would benefit the people came from God. Because Saul operated in rebellion and he didn't obey the voice of the Lord, the spirit that came upon him for a time and a season and a purpose left. Okay? The anointing of the Lord was upon him for a reason and for a purpose. And I just, I, I just want to park real quick. When, when we first started allowing Holy Spirit to move, um, we had an amazing time. It was rough. It was sloppy. It was messy. It was not cute. We did not know what we were doing. But we would have a few scenarios happen. And one thing that happened over and over on our Wednesday night services is my husband would stop playing the guitar and he would say, you know, I think somebody has something to say from the Lord. He, he didn't even, we didn't know enough to even call it a prophetic word. We weren't operating like that seven, eight, nine years ago. We, we've changed. <laughs> but but he, would, he would just slow down and he'd say, somebody has something from the Lord. And I did not feel anything. I had zero discernment. So I didn't feel anything. And he would just play quietly and wait till the person that God spoke to would speak up. And he'd wait. And he'd wait, and he'd wait, and me, being full of impatience, was like, can't we just go to the next song? Why do we have to keep waiting? And finally, at the end of all of his strumming, uh, Mike would say something from the Lord, and everybody would go home, you know, a couple hours later, whatever it was, and then at the end of the night, we would have this lady come up from the back, and she'd go, you know, I think that was me. <laughs> because everything you said is what I was thinking, but I didn't know if I was the one that had it. And so we were like, oh, okay, well, thanks for letting us know now that everybody's gone and then now we feel like nobody knows we can hear from the Lord <laughs> because it was in private, right? Um, and, you know, if that happens, well, next time just, you know, come up and you could give the word. Uh, and then the next Wednesday, oh, the most important part, it was the same word. So it was the same word that was given, and Mike would get it, okay? So the next week, when Mike would feel like somebody has a word and the Spirit of the Lord is on someone to do something, and he'd slow down, and he would be really patient, and he would wait. And guess what? It would happen over and over and over while Miss Impatient was like, ah! And at the end of the night, the person would come up and say, you know, I think I had that word. And we'd go, well, yeah, seems like what's happening is when you don't give what God has given you, he gives it to somebody else because it's not for you alone. It's for the body. It's for the equipping, okay? So when the spirit of the Lord comes upon us for a purpose, Sometimes it's positions, okay? Are you occupying the position that God has for you? When you don't occupy where you're supposed to stand, guess who stands there? Somebody else. Somebody else. 
that's bad for them and that's bad for you because you're not you're not replaceable you're irreplaceable when the, with this particular woman we, we finally said hey you know you being a, a mom in this church being full of love being in a different time period in your life even if it's the same word it's different because it's you and it's not Mike Anyways, as you guys can tell, we figured out how to roll with Holy Spirit. We figured out how prof prophecy works, uh, and we have, we have come together uh, as a corporate body that allows the Spirit of the Lord to talk. Amen? Amen. Uh, and, um, and, it's, and it's for the benefit of everyone. So you can, you can read more about this story, but I'm going to just take a minute to tell you what happened with Samuel. So Samuel came to Saul and he gave him the word of the Lord. And he said, I want you to go and I want you to invade and utterly destroy the Amalekites. And so Saul gathered his men and attacked the Amalekites. But he didn't utterly destroy them. He chose to spare the king Agag and the best sheep and the best oxen. Okay. When Saul calls him out on his rebellion, when Samuel calls Saul out on his rebellion, Saul does a few things. He reacts in stubbornness and he doesn't repent. He doesn't admit guilt. And then he blames it on the people and on God and says to Samuel, well, we actually, we were going to sacrifice all of these sheep and these oxen that we didn't destroy. We were going to sacrifice it to your God. At Gilgal. Okay. So some more hard questions. Just go ahead and close your eyes. And we're just going to ask the Lord as you get your answers, you can just type them out on your phone or write with the paper and pen. Holy Spirit, is my will in line with what you are calling me to do? Holy Spirit, are there any actions or inactions that I need to align with you? Holy Spirit, is there any part of my character that isn't rooted in line with your fruit in Galatians 5, 22 and 23, which is love joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Holy Spirit, have I sinned against you in any way and not accepted full responsibility for my sin that you've made me aware of? So quickly jot that down. So after this time, Saul, Samuel gives Saul the consequence. Okay? The Holy Spirit came upon him for a time, a season, and a purpose, right? But he wasn't operating in the, in the spirit of the Lord. So that anointing came off of him, and he lost his purpose, okay? As soon as Samuel says that he has lost his kingship and it's going to be given to David. He comes and he tries to repent. It's only after the consequence that he repents. Okay? So we want to get we want to we want to be repentant immediately. <laughs> if we have to go all the way to the consequence that means we've got to uproot some stubbornness and some stick neck neck neckness that says, oh my gosh, Lord, you gave me chance and chance and chance and chance and chance again to obey and do the right thing by hearing, and I just never did. So now I've got this horrific consequence, okay? So when Saul 
when Saul uh, finds out his consequence, his biggest fear is that he would be dishonored in front of the people. He was fearful of losing his reputation. I totally get that. I really do. I, I really get, you know, sometimes I'm like, oh gosh, what was it last week? And I'm like, I feel like God's going to give a, like a kidney to somebody. I'm like, what is that? what is that? Like, Lord, I don't know anybody in here that needs a new kidney. And so I just whispered it to Mike, like, hey, just call this out, you know? But you don't want to lose face in front of a group of people, and I get it. And even though I was a chicken, God came through. <laughs> and we're going to wait for good results. I'm going to stop you right there. Uh, so Mike, Come up here so they can see you. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, Tiffany is absolutely 100% right. Uh, my son, my beautiful Logan over there, has had uh, many issues with kidney stones for about two and a half, maybe three years now. Uh, he just had his stent removed about three weeks ago. Uh, they just kept forming. It, it's been an issue, so that prayer was definitely meant for him. Confirmation. Just saying. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your full healing on Logan. Um, so, so he was he was really worried about his reputation. And when we find out what he feared the most, we discover what he valued the most. Okay. In this case, he valued his honor. And fear of the people instead of the Lord and the Lord's purposes. So we're just going to ask the Lord, Holy Spirit, what am I fearing most? What am I fearing most? Is there any thing other than you that I place more value on? I want my friends to think I'm cool instead of finding out that I love Jesus. What do I value most? What do I value most? If there's anything out of order in that, God is so good. You just repent and ask the Lord to order your priorities, order your heart. I believe that the Lord is allowing us to see in the spiritual realm of what keeps people in vicious cycles. And more importantly, he's showing us how to stop cycles. Stop. We're not doing on again, off again. We're not doing that this year. And the reason why is because God's called this body of people to go out. And every single, from June in the senior building who goes out every single day to minister in her place, to, to every single one of you, every single one of us go out. We go out. The anointing of the Lord is on us. It's not for, it's not just, it's so much bigger, y'all. It's, it's actually frightening. But his, his spirit and his anointing is on each and every one of us. Not just for our family, not just for our marriage, not just for our uh, family unit, not just for our finances, not just for our neighborhood but it's to impact the entire earth. The entire earth is waiting. They're wanting an encounter. They're looking everywhere for peace. They're looking everywhere for peace. We have the prince of peace. The prince. <laughs> the prince of peace. We can give it to them in one second. The first time I ever had the Prince of Peace, this person just came and touched the back of my shoulder. And I just, I mean, it was just like a deflated balloon. I went, everything that I was carrying, it just came off. And his peace came in. I told you guys from the beginning, I am an equipper. 
which means it, it Clarice knows from running with us, but we run, we run forward. We don't run on a treadmill. We, we run forward because the world needs us. We, we run forward because if we're not filled to overflowing, when I meet that person that needs healing, and all I can talk about is, ah, my boss made me do this, and all I have is salt water coming out of my mouth, that person's not getting it. I can't give what I don't have. I can't give what I don't have. Sometimes people tell me, oh, I just, I really wanted this person to come and be with us in the yard. And I'm like, oh, that's, that's great. And I love that. But what I, but what the Lord designed, which is what we're building here, is an apostolic church. That means it's not about coming here. That means every one of us go out to bring what happens here, there. So it doesn't matter that my friend at work who lives an hour and however much away isn't born again. All that matters is that's my friend and I'm born again. I don't have to bring my friend here. I can go to my friend and I can give my friend that born again experience. I can grab their hands and go, Lord, everything that you've given me, I give it to them. Blast them, Lord. Blast them, Lord. Give them all the joy. Give them all the peace. Give them all the faith. Give them all the grit. Give them all this, the uh, determination to see you in every area of their life. Every area. Every area. Grab them. Don't bring them to me. I don't want your, your kill. Go. Get them. Get them for the Lord. Get them for the Lord. Each and every one of you is anointed. This one, Lauren called me this week. She's like, Tiffany, I prayed God would bring me somebody with demons. And he did. I did. And, they, and the Lord brought her somebody totally demonized. With a lot of big demons, a whole collection. A whole collection of demons. She's praying bold prayers. And then she's like, and I, and I came and, and prayed for that person. I prayed for that person. You have what it takes, Lauren. You have what it takes. You have Holy Spirit in you. You lack nothing. You lack nothing. Y'all stand up with me. I'm going to take authority. And then we're going to have Holy Spirit come. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Lord. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I take authority over every vicious cycle. Lukey, don't worry about it. That isn't rooted and grounded in you. I declare a stop cycle right now in Jesus name. I ask for the power of the Holy Spirit to flow through each humble heart who is willing to accept full responsibility for any and all sins committed. I declare the power and authority of the Holy Spirit to operate in the right spirit and the right heart. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for empowering us with everything that we need to be victorious. Jesus, thank you for removing all guilt, all shame. Thank you for receiving us with unconditional love and acceptance. I declare over each and every one of you that you will see the goodness of the Lord and the land of the living. And so I ask Holy Spirit to come and anoint every single person. Some of you know the purpose. Some of you have the Holy Spirit on your hands right now. I can see it. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Come. There's more fire on your hands because you're going to be healing. Inner healing, deliverance, and physical healing. It's coming on you. There it is. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Wow. Huh. Some of you think that spirit of depression is your best friend. It's not. 
And that thing needs to go in the name of Jesus. And the way to get that thing off is to tell it to go. You've got authority and power in Jesus' name. That thing has to go. That thing has to go in Jesus' name. You can start ministering, Mike. Come, Holy Spirit. More, Lord. More, Lord. Just touch every single one. Every single one. A renewed, a renewed spirit in this place so that we're never the same. So that we're anointed. We know which spirit we have on us for the times and the seasons. Thank you, Lord, for anointing each and every one of us for when our, we go out into our workplace. We lay our hands on the sick and they recover. It's our mandate. That means we do it and God shows up. Each and every one of us started in fear and trepidation, but we went at it. And we've seen more healings and more than we could imagine. The Holy Spirit is in you for your benefit. But he's going to come upon you just like he came upon Anthony to save that poor dog. He comes upon us for a purpose. Some of us have multiple purposes. So come, Holy Spirit, more, Lord. More, Lord, just keep receiving from him. Keep asking for more. More, Lord. I'm just going to put the microphone down and just come into agreement with what the Lord is doing. You guys on Zoom, we bless you. We pray more for each and every single one of you. Ooh. The spirit of depression is coming off of you, Zoom family. I think there's a few of you on here that have a spirit of depression. And a spirit of joy is actually your uh, root. Your root is a spirit of joy. So if there's anything else trying to get on you, that's an invader and an intruder, and he does not belong. So quit carrying him around. Tell him to get off in the name of Jesus and that the joy of the Lord is your strength. Come, Holy Spirit, more.